Welcome back to the shed. If you're looking for help with your new 3D printer, you've come to the wrong place. This cube is made using three-way miters, which sounds complicated, but it really isn't. Set your miter saw to 45 degrees, set up a stop block, and make the cut. Now rotate the bit of wood and make another cut. It's that easy. Once three of them have been glued together, we end up with something like this. Look at that, we've made a three-way miter. I know what you're thinking. This is made of smaller material that isn't safe to cut on the miter saw. Well, I'm going to get to that. These pieces are too small to cut safely on a miter saw, so let's try something else. This is a 45 degree shooting board. It's great for long sticks, but these small ones are quite tricky to hold in place without shaving off a knuckle or two. So let's try something else. Option two is this 45 degree Kumiko jig. With a stop block in place, we can cut our first miter, rotate the wood and cut the second. I'm struggling with this oak and I'm making a bit of a mess of it. So let's try something else. Option three is a disc sander with a bit of MDF clamped at a 45 degree angle. I found it useful to wrap some masking tape around your finger to give a better grip on the wood. Push the bit of wood into the disc and create the angle. Rotate it and sand the second. Looking good. Look at that, we made some walnut bits too. Gluing these things can be quite tricky, so let's glue them in sections and keep our fingers crossed that they all fit together in the next step. Okay, fingers still crossed, let's get these glued up. Let's see what we've got. The old cross fingers trick never fails. Here's the plan for the next bit. The cube is going to fit between these two uprights and be able to spin freely. The uprights can be any shape you fancy, but since we're set up to cut miters, why don't we make them like this? The secret to how this thing works is down to these shallow holes. They give the point of the cube somewhere to go without being held too tightly. Measuring the size of the cube from point to point gives us the width of the base we need to make. With the uprights and base clamped in place we can see if the cube will fit. That looks okay. Let's glue the uprights to the base and take it for a spin. That was fun. Working with small parts can be quite challenging, but we found a solution in the end. Would it have been easier to just make a big one? Yes. But where's the fun in that? I'll talk to you next time.